A very warm welcome to the broadcast. My name is Purity Museo and Lucy Mwara is our sign language interpreter. Tonight, our top story, the recruitment of four more commissioners at the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission is set to begin in earnest following the declaration of vacancies at the electoral body. In a Gazette notice dated 12th of April, President Uhuru Kenyatta announced the positions paving the way for the constitution of the selection panel to oversee the hiring of the new commissioners. The positions became vacant in a fallout at the commission after the 2017 general election. The exit of four commissioners from the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission three years ago created a huge gap in the management of Kenya's electoral affairs. Since then, IBC has kept a brave face with Chairperson of Fula Chebukati and the two other commissioners maintaining that the commission is up for the task. Rosalind Akombe, Paul Kurgat, Margaret Mwachanya and Consulatan Katha Minor resigned from IABC citing lack of confidence in the commission chairperson of Fula Chebukati. Despite publicly announcing their exit from office, the four commissioners were assumed to be still in office until they officially tender their resignation to the president as required by law. That declaration therefore corresponds to the provision of law that the president shall gazette the vacancies in those offices within seven days when those offices fall vacant. Therefore, I repeat, the only presumption we make here is that the offices fell vacant seven days before the gazette, or in the alternative, the resignation crystallized seven days before the gazette. Political analyst Martin Andati says that with the publication of the notice of vacancy, the ball has been set rolling for the building bridges referendum and the general election. So, because once parliament is done with the process of, uh, of, uh, of uh, debating the bill, whether they pass it or reject it, we must go for a referendum because there are certain clauses you cannot, the protected uh, clauses of the constitution, you cannot, like the executive, you cannot expand uh, the issues of the, constitu the constituencies. You can't change the numbers without uh, taking it to the referendum. So for you to be able to effect those changes, uh, you will need a referendum. And you know, a referendum is an election. So for all intents and purposes, you need a fully constituted commission to be able to carry out uh, the referendum. We can forbid will be that first they deal with the BBI election and then the, subsequently the general election um, for the new commissioners that come in to fill those positions. The other way is if BBI transaction does not take place, then they'll be, they have to prepare themselves for next year's general election, um, which then will be the first task that they will be beholden to hold um, in the first place. And that is says the recruitment of new commissioners will also ensure there is no vacuum at the commission after the seven-year non-renewal contract of Chebukati, Molo and Gulie comes to an end next year. At least with four commissioners in place, the commission can still function. Because, you know, once the four commissioners are appointed, it means one of them will have to be picked as the vice chair. So with the vice chair... Uh, and with the term of this four, uh, of course that will be from the four. So if these three are exiting next year, then it means the vice chair can act as a chair. Then you still have the other three commissioners constituting the plenary. So there is no vacuum as the process of recruiting the fresh commissioner starts. So that we don't have the kind of vacuum that uh, we have had uh, like the, uh, currently. The recruitment of the commissioners is expected to pave way for the hiring of a chief executive officer, an office that has remained without a substantive occupant since the sacking of Ezra Chiloba. When the secretariat is also put into place, which basically is a recruitment process that will be undertaken by a fully constituted commission of commissioners, then it, it follows therefore that um, the easier part will be on the secretariat, uh, recruitment of secretary, as opposed to the commissioners, because the recruitment of the commissioner is more political than that of the secretariat. Suleiman Yeri, Channel One News.
and former director of public prosecutions Philip Murgor has vowed to fight corruption and eradicate cartels in the judiciary if appointed as the next chief justice. The 60-year-old prominent city lawyer with over 30 years experience in the legal profession while appearing before the Judiciary Service Commission accused the commission of having too many sittings without expediting the hearing and determination of complaints against judges and magistrates. And as Ben Chumba reports, Philip Murgor was, however, hard pressed to explain why his lack of judicial experience would not hinder him from dispensing the roles of Chief Justice if given the job. Philip Murgor, who served as the Director of Public Prosecutions between 2003 and 2005, appeared before the Judicial Service Commission as the fifth interviewee for the position of Chief Justice. The former Director of Public Prosecutions vowed to fight graft in the judiciary, citing cartels he claimed are holding the judiciary at ransom. Cartels move on when they can no longer feed and feast. So just the fact that the honeymoon is over, they are the first to know. But should they not move on, they will, through EACC and any other agency, be placed under a spotlight. Murgor faulted the Judicial Service Commission for having too many sittings and lethargy in adjudicating complaints against judges and magistrates. When the Honorable former Chief Justice, who had complaints to make, uh, to the president or to the public, general, uh, it directed at the public, he stood on those steps alone. I often wondered where was Commissioner Machari and Jeru and team. I'm aware that there is litigation between some of you. Priority, why does it have to be there? The prominent Nairobi-based lawyer who had petitioned the commission to have Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu removed from the recruitment panel gave the panelist led by Professor Olive Mugenda a difficult time in answering questions. It's a misplaced question. Uh, okay. Uh, ask um, it another way, maybe. I'll I will not ask it another way. All I'll say is this. A man is his history, and uh, we will judge you accordingly. At some point, an exchange ensued between Murgor and Mwilu on the role of acting chief justice. When the Deputy Chief Justice inquired whether there has been a vacuum in the office of the Chief Justice following David Maraga's retirement. Senior Counsel, did you say that the situation is different now because we do not have a Chief Justice? Uh, I said as long as it is not a Chief Justice, the Chief situation may not change. Uh, you've lost me. Um, you, I, I'm not sure even you are with, with the question. Yes, I please, am. Please repeat it. I am with the question because I'm the person asking the question. Has there been a vacuum? I have not done a survey to ascertain uh, what it is uh, that would be described as a vacuum. And I am not saying that the acting Chief Justice is not doing her best. 60-year-old Murgor was, however, at pains to prove his suitability Amid claims he is short-tempered and allegedly took part in an event to overthrow the late President Daniel Arab Moy's government in 1982. We were not, it wasn't rioting. It wasn't rioting. Yes, so what were you accused of? Of taking part in a demonstration. Taking part in the demonstration. And this demonstration was in relation to what? The, uh, the coup. It was in relation to the coup. Yes. A few years you come to the DPP's office. Now you want to be Chief Justice. Are you the kind of person we should risk to be the Chief Justice knowing that this kind of events may happen? If I was the magistrate, perhaps some of your questions would have been relevant. But I was simply the lawyer advancing a case for one side. There were others advancing the opposite case. The remaining five applicants yet to be interviewed will have their turn from Monday next week. Justice Ndumanderu of the Employment and Labor Relations Court will be the first to face the panel. Others are Fred Ngatia, Justice William Ouko, Professor Weke Samoni and Alice Yano. Ben Chumba reporting for Channel One News.
In other news, the Kenya Red Cross Society is warning of a looming humanitarian crisis in many parts of the country occasioned by floods and drought. Kenya Red Cross Society Secretary General Dr. Asha Mohammed says there is a need to put in place adequate mitigation measures to avert the looming crisis. Over 1.4 million people are facing food crisis according to the 2021 assessment by Kenya Food Security Steering Group. The ongoing Rains have already caused flash, uh, floods in areas around Lake Victoria and Etana Delta, displacing hundreds of families. Families in drought and flood-prone areas across the country are staring at a crisis, according to Kenya Red Cross Society. Focus by Kenya Meteorological Department paint a dual picture of hope and gloom this year. In some parts, there will be enhanced rains, while on the other side, rains will be subdued, leading to drought conditions. According to Red Cross, parts of the country are yet to fully settle families that were displaced by floods two years ago. A case in point is areas around Lake Victoria, where out of 11,000 who were rendered homeless, 1,180 are still in camps. Our projections indicate that in this area alone, at least 15,000 families and over 30,000 families countrywide will need urgent support in terms of shelter, food, clean water, and basic health. Ikiwa mvua itaendelea zaidi, uh, tumekadiria kwamba itafikia hadi karibu elfu stini, familia elfu stini, ambazo pia zitapata uh, kudurika kwa njia moja hadi nyingine. The weatherman says average to above average rainfall is expected in western Rift Valley, coast, and central till the month of June. The downpour is already causing flash floods in Tana Delta and has already displaced 121 households. From one looming crisis to another, below average rainfall in semi-arid counties coupled with a locust inversion risk exposing north frontier counties to hunger. Three counties, that is Turkana, Marsabit and Mandera, are the most affected currently and are in what is traditionally described as an alarm phase of food insecurity. Another six counties, Baringo, Isiolo, Kilifi, Garissa, Wajia and Tana River, are in the alert phase and are trending towards a worsening situation. An assessment by the Kenya Food Security Steering Group conducted in February 2021 indicates that over 1.4 million people are at risk of a food crisis. 400,000 children aged between 6 to 59 months are acutely malnourished and in need of treatment. These people, unless urgent intervention is done, are facing a food crisis, which is an increase of 93% compared to the preceding long rain season and are in need of urgent life-saving support. Uh, tunahitaji zaidi ya milioni mianane, yani milioni miatatu na kuminatano ya kusaidia upande wa ukame, na milioni mianne, zaidi ya milioni mianne kusaidia kwa upande wa mafuriko. Kenya Red Cross Society says the situation will aggravate and concerted efforts by all stakeholders are needed to minimize human suffering amid a pandemic that has only worsened the situation. Kamche Menza for Channel One News. In other news, the Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha has defended the integrity of the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education Examinations. Magoha says the government has effectively dealt with loopholes that had previously been exploited by cheats of compromise in the national exam. The marking of the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education Examination papers are expected to get underway as soon as the final paper is written next week. A day after releasing KCP results, Education Cabinet Secretary George Magoha has expressed confidence in the education reforms guiding the conduct of the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education Examination. Speaking in Naivasha on Friday, after supervising the opening of the exams container, the CA said that all security measures were in place ahead of the marking process. In terms of the security of teachers that are going to mark the examination, 
the government of the Republic of Kenya has decided that we shall vaccinate as many of those that is possible, depending on the availability of the vaccines, but we shall start transporting them anytime next week because this process is going to go on. The marking of the KCSC exam papers will take three weeks once the national exams end next week. Meanwhile, the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers Busia branch has called on the Ministry of Education to facilitate the travel of teachers to exam marking centers. Tunasistisa ya kwamba waziri pamoja na CEO wa NEC they take an urgent measure kuhakikisha ya kwamba maslahi ya, ya watahini yatakuwa sawa sawa na kasi la sivyo venye katibu amesema watahini wengi wasifika Nairobi kwa sababu maslahi yao hayatakuwa yanaangaliwa if not we are afraid that very few examiners might turn up for marking hence jeopardizing this national exercise. Kupet says teachers cannot be left to cater for their mode of transport, considering the ongoing restrictions on movement in some counties. Ruth Wamboy for Channel One News. Staying with education matters, the highest score in the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education Examination has been on a downward trend for the third year in 2020. The highest mark was 433 compared to 440 in 2019 and 453 in 2018, respectively. Similarly, the number of candidates in who scored between 400 and 500 marks were 8,091 in 2020, which is lower number compared to the number of candidates who managed to score above 400 marks in 2018 and 2019 at 9,673 and 11,559 respectively. However, the number of candidates who scored between 300 and 399 marks was better in 2020 than in 2018 and 2019. Candidates who sat for the 2020 Kenya Certificate of Primary Education Examination continue to receive praise for their commendable performance, considering the circumstances that saw the examination calendar disrupted. At PCA Nanyuki Girls in Lekipia County, nine girls posted 400 marks and above, sparking celebrations. The school had a mean grade of 371 marks. It was jubilation at Hill School, Utawala, in Nairobi County, where 20 candidates got 400 marks and above. I scored 421 in this year's KCP, and I am thankful to God for keeping us this entire period of corona. Another school enjoying the limelight is Little Angels in Isilo County, where six girls posted 400 marks and above, and 62 others posted above 300 marks. The candidates are among 8,091 candidates countrywide who scored between 400 and 500 marks. 282,090 managed between 300 and 399 marks in the just released results, while 589,027 candidates got between 200 and 299 marks. 299,677 candidates scored between 100 and 199 marks and 307 candidates had between 1 and 99 marks in the exams. In 2020, candidates with special needs also posted encouraging results. Nine candidates garnered 400 marks and above compared to 11 in 2019 and 8 in 2018. Set Green Hill Academy in Kisi County produced the best student nationally in the special needs category, Brandon Otundo, who scored 420 marks. My mom used to encourage me to study and uh, my brother, who is also in Form 4, so we used to have the, those uh, study timetables and whatever, so it kept encouraging me to study. Gibson Diema from Bungoma County's Nalondo CBM Special School was ranked second in the country 
having scored 411 marks. Three hundred and eighteen special needs candidates managed between three hundred and three hundred and ninety nine marks. Eight hundred and ninety seven scored between two hundred and two hundred and ninety nine marks. One thousand three hundred and fifty six managed between one hundred and one hundred and ninety nine marks. And eleven candidates got between one and ninety nine marks. Irene Mchuma Odim, Channel One. The results of the 2020 Kenya Certificate of Primary Education continue to be received with jubilation across the country. Despite the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, most pupils appear to have set their sights on the price to post exemplary performance in the national examinations. And here are the highlights of the ensuing celebrations. My dream school was Kenya High School. Um, so I, I want to thank my parents. sacrifice I'd like to join Edinburgh in high school because it has good facilities. It has helped me a lot. Uh, I joined in class seven and yeah, it's a good school. Nilipata for 13 na walimu wangu ndo walikuwa wanamsaidia na wazazi na kupata hiyo alama inalibidi nisome kwa bidii usiku na mchana I managed to score 421 marks I'm feeling so happy because I've passed. It was to my expectation, not that much, but I'm so happy. At least I've managed to score 400 and above marks. I want to be a doctor in future and I want to help those who are in need. Okay, study girls is my has been my aspiration since I was a kid and I want to join it. I school in the county school. I've got four hundred and ten marks. I'm so grateful to God for the fire sticking me. I want to thank this school for providing for me a conducive environment to read and to and to understand all the all that I'm reading. <laughs> Mudasa has been in existence for close to 29 years now, and we've been very consistent in what we are doing. Uh, we've always performed well. There is nothing new really to learn from us. Uh, we stay uh, focused, our students are disciplined, and the most important is that God has got to be in your favor. Okay, don't forget to send in your feedback on Twitter at purity underscore sale. You can also tag at KBC Channel One News and use the hashtag Channel One Weekend. We are taking a short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We still have plenty more to come. Stay with us. This weekend on KBC Channel One. Even though he's no longer with us, I know that no matter where he is, you must be very happy to see that we accomplished it.
It's urgent that I know Mrs. Flavia Santiana's real financial status. Nina? Luna? Can you please tell me what you're doing here? This weekend on KBC Channel 1. We want to talk about women and the workplace. It is estimated today that women work at least 40 hours every week. And so the workplace has become as important as home. I have a lot of studies. Mm. And the treatment of the cancer, it is very expensive. Mm. I know it is not easy, but I pray on God that I will make it. We are encouraging private sector companies to support women so that they can challenge their obstacles. People get adopted leader because of pregnancy. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. And it starts from leadership, leadership of that company. Talk of teams and teams behind the team. The chase of the Emirates FA Cup is on this weekend to event for some final matches by England's leading lights around the Cubs at Wembley Stadium. On Saturday, 17th of April, Chelsea will clash with Manchester City at 7.30 p.m. Meanwhile, Leicester City will battle it out with Southampton on Sunday, 18th of April at 8.30 p.m. At put as a team, there is a lot to play for. You either cruise to the finals or get dropped. Live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1. KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner. And welcome back. You're watching Channel One Weekend this Friday night. Lucy Mora is a sign language interpreter tonight. 1,041 people have tested positive for COVID-19 disease from a sample size of 7,753 tested in the last 24 hours. The positivity rate now stands at 13.4%. According to the latest statistics from the Minister of Health, 19 deaths have been reported, one having occurred in the last 24 hours. 24 hours, nine on diverse dates within the last one month, while nine on the late deaths received from the facility record audits. Two of the 1,043 COVID-19 positive cases, the youngest is a two-year-old child, while the oldest is 93 years. The new infections bring the total number of confirmed positive cases to 150,260. In the latest statistics, Nairobi County leads the park with 323 cases, Transnzoia 71, Mombasa 62, Nakuru 44, Wasin Gishu and Nyamira 43 cases each, Siaya 41, Kitui 40 and 
Kisumu, 36 cases, 19 deaths have been reported, one having occurred in the last 24 hours, nine on diverse deaths within the last one month, while nine alert deaths from facility record audits. The total number of fatalities now stand at 2,443. In the last 24 hours, 343 people have recovered from the disease, 217 from home-based care and isolation, while 126 from various health facilities across the country. Total recoveries now stand at 100,980. A total of 1,588 patients are currently admitted at various health facilities countrywide. 5,757 are on home-based isolation and home care. And away from the pandemic, security agents in Baringo County have launched a manhunt for bandits who killed a Kenya Defense Forces soldier on Thursday night at a military camp in Baringo South. The bandits are said to have simultaneously attacked camps belonging to the Kenya Defense Forces General Service Unit, Rapid Deployment Unit and Kenya Forest Service holding the camps under siege for hours. Tension is high in Baringo South following the killing of a Kenya Defense Force officer by bandits in Mukutani on Thursday night. The prison attack is said to have targeted civilians who had taken refuge in the security camps in the area. The bandits are reported to have laid siege on four security camps in the region. The attack comes just days after Rift Valley Regional Commissioner George Natembea ordered the resumption of security operations in the area. Watu wetu wamepoteza maisha. Na maisha ya watu wetu ni muhimu kama mwananchi mwingine yote wa nchi. Tunataka security. And we are, we are demanding it kwa sababu ni right yetu. A security caravan was recently organized in the region and leaders urged to play key roles in ensuring there is lasting peace between communities living in the area. Elsewhere, detectives in Kisumu County have recovered household items believed to have been stolen from various houses within Manyata Estate. Kisumu Central Sub-County Commander James Ngetich says one suspect is in custody even as police pursue other members of the gang believed to be terrorizing area residents. This is a team that is uh, now committing crimes within this area of Manyata, uh, Kondele and Obunga areas. That their days are numbered and the team which is out during that night or during the night will not leave and they will not take chance but to get uh, them and to deal with them as per the law. The recovered items included 14 mobile phones, two television sets, one Ministry of Education tablet and a music system. And an activist has moved to court seeking an order to stop the ongoing interviews for the appointment of the Chief Justice member, member rather, Ocharo through his lawyers Dunstan Omari and Shadra Kwamboi says the candidates who have been interviewed so far have admitted that they did not fill the wealth declaration form as required by law. Member Ocharo, an activist, has moved to court in a bid to stop the ongoing interviews for the search of new Chief Justice. Through his lawyers, Dunstan Omari and Shadrach Wamboi, Ocharo has argued that vetting process has fallen way below the constitutional threshold. They added that the five candidates, Professor Patricia Mbote, Appellate Judge Martha Koome, Justice Saidi Chitembwe, and Justice David Njagi Marete, have publicly admitted during their interview interviews that they did not fill wealth declaration forms as required by law. Five of those who have been interviewed have admitted on national television that they never filed the forms, the wealth declaration forms for their spouses. So the question is, how did they qualify to be shortlisted for the interview? They have also questioned why the interviews are being chaired by Professor Olive Mugenda in open defiance and insubordination of the Constitution and the statutory dictate that demand JSC affairs should either be chaired by the Chief Justice or his deputy. Article 259.3b of the Constitution says 
Anybody who is vested with the powers to act substantively in a position where the holder has died or the holder is no longer able to sit shall chair. So by law under Article 259 uh, uh, 7C 3B only Justice, Deputy Chief Justice, the Acting Chief Justice will concede. The file will be placed before a vacation judge, Justice Weldon Career, for directions. In other news, a section of leaders in Mandera County is calling for peace between the Gare and Murule communities after the killing of Ahad a few weeks ago in La Fe area by a non-person's fueling intercommunal intercommunity tension in the area led by the Deputy Governor Mohamed Arai. The leaders urged residents to maintain peace during the month of Ramadan and embrace Islamic teachings on peace. Speaking in Mandera, Arai said the county government has formed an elders task force to curb and build peace in the area, a process which was initiated after the killing of Ahada a few weeks ago in Lafay area by unknown persons fueling intercommunal tension in the area. Because these are two brothers, these are two Muslims who are staying together, who have ever been living together harmoniously, is to tell those people that we try to to, to, to ignite the peaceful coexistence between these two communities. In Kiambu County, teachers and parents have urged the Minister of Education to ensure fairness in the exercise to ensure candidates are placed in their preferred schools of choice. According to Tumaini Spire Junior Head Teacher and Jockey, the Education Ministry should ensure a thorough selection process and put into consideration the student choices. I think the government should see into it is that every child gets a position, and especially those who are 300, 301, and anybody with a 200 should actually get a position from any private school I should say that because times are when the government may learn to the top students and forget the, the, the ones that are below Meanwhile, bar owners in Kiambu County are appealing to the national and county governments to assist their staff with relief aid after the closure of their premises following the third wave of COVID-19. Kiambu County Bar Owners Association Chairman Joseph Kariuki further urged the national government to negotiate with financial institutions to waive loan interest and extend the loan repayment period as many workers in the service industry have no other sources of income. At the same time, he called on the government to consider bar owners and staff as frontline workers and include them in the priority group for the COVID-19 vaccination program. The idea ile chanjo itufikia kwa haraka ya COVID-19. Tunasikia kuna hiyo kiti. Lakini tungeomba serikali kwa kuhurumia wananchi wa county hizi tano. Kwa muda huu tungeomba serikali kama ingeweza angalau kusaidia hawa wafanyibiashara na wafanyi kazi wao kupata kitu kidogo hata kama ni kwa weekly basis, basis ama kwa mwezi. Elsewhere, healthcare service delivery in Kisumu County has received a major boost following the donation of three vehicles to the county by Johns Hopkins Program for International Education in Gynecology and Obstetrics, a local non-governmental organization funded by United States Agency for International Development. Kisumu County Governor Professor Anyang Nyongo, while receiving the donation, lauded the support that USAID has offered to the region in strengthening its health sector. The U.S. Agency for International Development has granted J. Piego several grants to support family planning, reproductive health, maternal health, neonatal health, child and adolescent health in Kisumu County. This has been done through a number of programs which included AFIA-LISI, 
which started in 2017. Finally, two dolphins and a turtle were found dead along the shores of the Indian Ocean in Kipini area, Tana Delta, sub-county of Tana River County, in what is believed to be a result of illegal trawlers fishing in the area. Kenya wildlife officials, together with Kilipini Beach Management Unit members who were on patrol, came across the two decomposing bodies of dolphins and later found the turtle, which had head injuries. Community members and fishermen are urging the government to ban trolling activities as they are causing major destruction to marine life in the area. Kuna madhara makubwa sana ikiwa serikali haitachukua hatua. Hivi sasa tumeteta miaka mingi. Tuwashukuru vile KWS kwa hapa na tukuona jambo hili kutusaidia kwa sababu jambo hili linaonekana wazi. Sasa tukuanza leo kulalamika sisi wakazi wa kipini. Kwa muda wa miaka 20 iliyopita bado sisi tunaendelea kudorora na uvuvi kwa sababu ya uharibifu wa meli mbali na kuumiza rasilimali zetu viumbe ambavyo viko hatari ya kuangamia pia vinaumia kama namna hii The East African Community and Regional Development Cabinet Secretary Aidan Mohamed is calling for full implementation of treaties and protocols that will enable the East African Court of Justice function independently. Mohamed, who graced the closing ceremony of a five-day induction of the newly appointed six-judge bench, noted that the court, which serves ESC members' countries, has been receiving many cases, thus the need for to be fully fledged, the president of the ESC Justice, Nestor Cabobera, said that efforts are being made to strengthen areas where the court needs improving throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. The court, with its headquarters in Arusha, Tanzania, has leveraged on the technology used to continue with its operations. Operations and the operations of the activities. And, and that ultimately is what we need to do community laws by the courts as opposed to two disputing countries or entities having to be arguing with one another uh, rather than getting the remedy from the courts. This applies equally to the rights and the freedom enshrined in the treaty for the establishment of the East African community and the protocols for the establishment also the protocol thereof. I wish to conclude my short remarks by pledging my full support and good collaboration with the judiciary of Kenya and the ministry responsible for ESC affairs and development of Kenya to continue working together in ensuring the vision and the missions of the East African Court of Justice so that its missions be achieved. Now time for business news. The Central Bank of Kenya has ordered the liquidation of Chase Bank that was placed under receivership in April 2016 due to the weakened financial position. Central Bank Governor Dr. Patrick Njoroge has appointed the Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation to execute the liquidation in a manner that protects the interest of depositors, creditors and the wider public interest. The Central Bank of Kenya has approved the selling off of Chess Bank's assets to settle outstanding debts to creditors and recovery of deposits by customers. CBK Governor Dr. Patrick Njoroge says the decision is informed by a recommendation from the Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation last Wednesday that the lender be liquidated. Dr. Njoroge says the report from the Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation indicates that considering the weak status of Chess Bank Limited in receivership's financial position, liquidation is the only feasible option. Liquidation of the lender that mainly focused on servicing the middle class and SMEs brings to an end a five-year process that started in April 2016 after Chase Bank was placed under receivership after a bank run. 
Dr. Njoroge said CBK has assessed the recommendation by KDAC and considered that liquidation will facilitate the orderly resolution of the residual assets and liabilities of CBLIR in accordance with the laws of Kenya to protect the interest of CBLIR depositors, its creditors and the wider public interest. The central bank has also tasked the Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation with the responsibility of offering information about the liquidation process and payment of depositors in due course. Those owed by Chase Bank have been advised to contact the Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation via email or calls. The Kenya Revenue Authority has so far collected 2.1, or rather collected 21 billion shillings from its alternative disputes resolution mechanism in current financial year. The revenue was generated after alternative disputes resolution cases recorded 109% on year growth. By the end of last month, the Kenya Revenue Authority had solved 393 tax-related disputes using the alternative dispute resolution mechanism. This represents a 109% year-on-year increase in the number of tax-related contests handled by the alternative dispute resolution mechanism. The taxman says this has spurred up revenue generated from the alternative dispute resolution mechanism by 399% to 21 billion shillings. KRA says the average time taken to resolve cases using the alternative dispute resolution mechanism has reduced from 89 days in the previous financial year to 42 days in the current financial year. The alternative dispute resolution mechanism has been hailed as a game changer in the revenue collection by reducing litigation expenses incurred by KRA and the taxpayers. If you do it through mediation or through the ADR, once you reach that uh, agreement on whatever the dispute there is between a taxpayer and the Kenya Revenue Authority, they reduce that into an agreement. And that agreement is signed by the parties. And uh, if there was a matter in court, it is uh, filed in court, and the judge or the court will adopt it. And it becomes like an order, a consent order. KRA is being asked to be innovative and enhance the alternative dispute resolution mechanism to be embraced by more taxpayers who have questions about billing of their taxes. Collection of taxes and whatever, it has been like, it's a fight. You know, it is like you, have, you are fighting with the, the, the taxpayer, or they bring exaggerated claims and, uh, you know, there's no room for negotiation. And that in itself has made very many people or otherwise potential taxpayers to find ways and means of really um, uh, evading or avoiding to pay the tax. KRA implemented the alternative dispute resolution mechanism in 2015. Benson, by reporting for Channel One Business. Elsewhere, 100 million shillings milk cooler has been commissioned in Dunduri, Nakuru County, promising to improve the quality of milk and reduce post-harvest losses of the produce. Area leaders say with completion of the cooling plant, dairy farmers will have a centralized place to store the milk. <laughs> The milk cooler has a capacity of 10,000 litres. Area residents are being challenged to embrace dairy farming as an economic enterprise to tap 10,000 litre capacity cooler as well as a ready market for the farm produce. Yeah, about 15 million, pasteurizer about 15 million, generator about 20 million. So in this place we have to pump around 100 million in this within this locality farmers and leaders are banking on the milk cooler to help reduce post-harvest losses and improve the market base of dairy cooperatives in the area if you mean on economy ya ya hii area ikibadilika kwa uh, hata kwa ufugaji ambao utaweza kuwa na yale maneno ndio inakuwa targeted kwa youth na ina target kwa mama ambao wako area ambao pengine amekuwa tu analima mabuti ama anafanya kazi ambao haikuwa inalete eh, mapato lakini ile tunataka kufanya the county government of Nakuru has pledged to finance the purchase of milk pasteurizers, dispensers and cooling systems in effort to boost value addition to stabilize farm gate prices. Kwa hivyo, ni kushukuru na shukuru ata serikari yetu. Masababu, hii muradi 
ni wa kama jia moja ya kuajiri kijana na mimi nigauri sasa wazazi wale wako na mashamba kidogo hii katia kijana yako badala ya kwenda kusurura huko katia ya sehemu kidogo na tunataka masomo ya ukulima kufua ngombe na sasa veterinary watuletee begu ile mzuri once operational the facility is expected to create hundreds of direct and indirect jobs terin jenga channel 1 business Thank you so much for staying with us. It's now time for the sport and Football Kenya Federation is exploring possible ways to have the national teams, Harambe Stars and Starlets start training for their upcoming assignments. All sporting activities in the country were suspended in March by the government following the surge in coronavirus cases. With both the Harambe Stars and Starlets facing assignments next month, the Football Kenya Federation has revealed they are exploring possible ways to have the national teams start their training after the government left matters of sports resumption in the country in the hands of Ministry of Health. Sports was halted by President Uhuru Kenyatta following the rising numbers of COVID-19 infections in the country. The national teams have upcoming